So we've made a little bit more progress. Anatoly's been working hard on my engines. Uh, we go into the engine room and have a look what's been happening. We're looking at uh, EJ20 that we've been building. Anatoly's just been doing a couple of the components on the on the front for the timing. We've got all the idlers on. We have fitted the high grip tensioner and we've got the gates racing belt and then we have also got that timing belt guide here from IAG and then Anatoly spent a bit of time dialing in the cams so we'll get the best performance out of the engine Currently I'm dialing cams on this engine This is a great C cams that means uh, something about that stage three, and they should be dialed because otherwise, engine may work unstable. fitted a bunch of external bits like the Kyan engine mounts and a crossover pipe and a couple fittings here and there as well as these studs so just getting it as prepared as we can before we're putting it into the engine bay. Right, the plan for the, the car as well as the engine is for it to be used hard so it can be tracked, uh, be a weekend track track day car for a start so we want to use good components that are strong enough to handle that and have some capacity for more power in the future so I guess a couple of these components are a little bit over spec for right now but they will be good in case we decide to put more power to it later sorry for my ratchet <laughs> One of the things that can happen with these cars, uh, especially if you're near the limiter, is that the timing belt can jump. So the guide as well as the old style high grip tensioner, they help prevent that from happening. So we don't have a case where we are skipping a tooth on the timing. Why we've used engine mines, uh, it's gonna be, comfort is not gonna be an objective, uh, having it nice and solid is much more important. So we have a no movement and a direct, in, direct feel of the power. And we still have a couple of parts to boil down, but they, they can all be done with the engine in the car. And yeah, getting it in the car is gonna be Another good step that, even though it may not be fully completed, we, we can see it in the car and it's always an exciting time to get the engine back in the car. Yeah, this is my manifold here, process west, all taped up, uh, we don't scratch it while we're working on it, yeah, but that's, that should look really nice in there. Clutch is here as well, we've got that ready, so that's got to go on, which is a extreme twin plate clutch. Uh, that should be plenty good for the power the car is going to make. It is a twin twin with uh, ceramic discs and yeah, I think this can handle a lot more than the 300-ish kilowatt what the car is going to make. So This uh, kit here is in between clutch, like it's not a full road or full race, so it's somewhere in the middle which uh, is going to be good for the application that I'm using it in. It's a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, but it's not super aggressive like a, a right, full race clutch.
need to get a fitting, but yeah, just giving it a quick wash because it's got lots of dust from um, uh, the last year that it was packed there. put the real engine in and then start to have a look at the turbo setup. We've just added our oil pressure sensor, so the one from the factory for the dash and one that will go to our ECU for oil pressure safeties and monitoring. Right. Now, now we're gonna shift it to the car, put it in. Just a dummy engine that we fitted to have a look at a few few parts of the setup, like the where the turbo goes and all of that. And on this engine, of course, it doesn't matter if we get some metal shavings or so into it, because it's, it's not going to be used for anything. And that way, we keep our our good engine protected. So we fitted a twin blade from Extreme, and that has a full to push conversion kit so got all the all the bits required for that here twist turbo setup that we're going to here will be fairly simple so we're using the factory up pipe and then we're going to make a custom up pipe adapter and that isn't going to be as time consuming as starting from scratch with a complete up pipe so we'll have a quick look at the actuator Got a turbo smart actuator here for the four corner EFR. That is a nice upgrade over the factory unit and should be bolting on straight, straight bolt on, so it keeps it nice and easy. And we can change the springs in here as we please. Therefore, we can set the the base pressure to to a suit whatever boost level we're gonna end up going for. Yeah, the factory one one allow us to go as high on the boost level, and we have better boost control with um, top and bottom ports that we control via the ECU. Get it in, yeah! Exciting moment, moving it inside in, into the car for a long time. It's been hard. Looks like a. The last time the engine was in here was a few years ago. The last time it was running would, would have been around Manifold to start with. But once that's sorted, then have a look on the top. So we've got the process with TGVs and manifold here. We can put that in place. Maybe dummy up some fuel rails. Because our twin squad Headers with the heat shielding, they don't quite fit with the US spec sump, so we'll need to make a little bit of a little bit of an adjustment to make it fit. Engine is in. Just finishing putting the headers on. And we've got the upper app on loosely. So we can 
have a look at where we're going to put the turbo. So we got the engine in, we've just fitted the exhaust manifold, now we've put the intake manifold on here and we're test fitting the fuel rails with the injectors and start to have a quick look at the turbocharger. So next time we'll focus on finishing those tasks off. See you next time and thank you for watching.